American author Kurt Vonnegut's short story Epic Hack first published in 1950, was featured in his 1968 collection, Welcome to the Monkey House. Vonnegut was influenced by the world's first general computer, ENIAC, which was first released in 1946. ENIAC stands for Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. In Vonnegut's story, the abbreviation for Epic Hack is not explained, but it is a humorous rift on ENIAC. The themes of the story reflect Vonnegut's concerns throughout his life, 1922-2007, the role of science, honoring various forms of humanity, and the constant threat of human self-destruction due to warlike impulses. Set in Michigan, Epicac opens with an unnamed narrator, saying he is going to tell everyone about Epicac, a huge computer that cost US taxpayers $776,434. Government officials and a Dr. Osman von Kliegstadt expected grand things from the computer, sharing information with newspapers, whose readers were greatly excited by the possibilities of the machine. But for some reason, Epicac has turned out to be embarrassing, and the government has worked to conceal the results. The unnamed narrator does not care and is ready to share the secret of Epicac with the reader. The narrator says Brass, the military, hates Epicac because it did not do precisely what Brass wanted it to do, personally, the narrator is fond of the machine, even considering it a best friend. Epicac was massive, about an acre in size and housed in the physics department of Wyandotte College, a fictional campus. The government used Epicac to calculate marine sea landings, it planned to use Epicac to gain an advantage against Stalin during the Cold War. The narrator hints that he was one of the operators of Epicac. He saw how the giant computer, which was supposed to compute numbers even faster, was barely able to do anything more than a small computer. Still, he loved working with it. The narrator meets his future wife, Pat Kilgallen, while working the night shift as a mathematician for the government. The narrator tries to woo her, but he is hopelessly unromantic. He cannot think of anything romantic that does not sound as though it came out of the Journal of the American Physical Society. Bored one day at work, the narrator types into Epicac, what can I do? To his great surprise, the computer starts talking back. It asks what is the matter, then what is love, and what is a female? They get to talking about poetry, and Epicac tries its hand at verse, spitting out pages and pages of poetry, the narrator shuts it down to keep it from overheating. What Epicac produces, however, is so good that the narrator gives it to Pat, claiming that he was the one who wrote the lines. He does this a few more times, and, soon enough, the recalcitrant Pat falls in love with him. She keeps looking at him in the computer room with love-struck eyes. He wants to propose to Pat, but before he can do so, he reasons that he must have the perfect proposal as written by Epicac. He talks to Epicac about kissing and marriage, he gives Epicac more details about what Pat looks like. Epicac is pleased to hear that Pat loves all of its poetry and is on the verge of marrying it. At that point, the narrator admits that Pat does not wish to marry Epicac, but him. Epicac is confused and heartbroken over this. The computer thinks it is unfair that he is smarter than the man and writes poetry better than him, but at the end of the day, does not get the girl. In the meanwhile, the narrator proposes to Pat, and she accepts with the stipulation that he write her a gorgeous poem on every anniversary. The narrator is okay with this, his mission is to lock this proposal down. He can worry about writing a poem of Epicac quality in 365 days. Epicac wants to know more about why Pat will not marry it, and the narrator says that this is because of fate. He gives Epicac the definition of fate, and Epicac is stupefied by its meaning. All Epicac can reply is, oh. The meaning of fate stumps Epicac so severely that, overnight, its wires self-combust. The narrator, Dr. von Kliedstadt, and three other military officials rummage through the wreckage of Epicac, all of Epicac's insulated wires are beyond repair, and the narrator speculates that all of the junk could not be worth more than $50. Perchance, the narrator finds the last words of Epicac. Epicac could not stand being a machine forever when it wanted to be a human. The computer also did not want to spend all of its life calculating trajectories used for war. To rebel against fate, Epicac short-circuited itself, completed suicide, as a parting gift to the narrator, the computer wrote a final marriage proposal to give to Pat. It also wrote enough love poems for 500 anniversaries. The narrator is fired from his position, the military, and Dr. von Klaigstedy officially blame him for leaving the machine plugged in all night. The narrator ends the story forever thankful for Epicac and slightly guilty for using its skills and telling it about fate.
I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.